So far the most popular video that I've done is on the out-of-box usage of the Crossman 362. At the beginning of that video I said that I was going to do some modifications to it to include a, a steel breech and a new scope. So I've already fitted on the steel breech. This video will be on refitting the steel breech and running it through the chronograph downstairs to see if it made any difference. In future videos I'm going to add this aim scope breech and this it replaces the stock breech which is a plastic Here's the bottom of it. And this is how it came in the original package. So now I'm going to take it apart and put the new one on step by step. I got her done. Ready to do functions check. I'll just do a couple pumps. Good to go. This time around I'm going to use three of the four that I used the first time around. I'm going to use the Crossman Hollow Point as the main one. The Cross Red Flight is a very nice penetrating round. I'm going to try the new, I guess that's designed to bite a little more, and then that H&N uh, Excite Hammer which performed really good the last time around. Results from the last time are right there if you want to put it on pause. I had to switch over to a new ledger book. Instead of putting them all on one page, using each round on one page so I could do further tests. Now I'm tacking down plywood. The plywood is, in fact, 5 8 inch thick. Then I'll cut another piece of it and hang it in front of it, and I will we'll do the chronograph. Up on the chronograph. I need three readings from the Crossman hollow point. Six ninety nine. Six forty six. All right, the last one for Crossman. Six fifty three. There's the last shot. Let's see if we see any daylight. No daylight. So it didn't go all the way through. Next up will be the Crossman Red Flight, an even 10. 588. 611. 611 on the last Red Flight. up is the Crossman Piranha and it's got the same weight as the hollow point. Last reading on the Piranha. Interesting here. One hit on top of another. Next one up is the Excite Hammer. This was the one that I had some of the best luck with on the other one. I'm try to get 10. 652 last reading on the Excite Hammer was 650. Okay, so let's take a look. Both of them really didn't penetrate much better than Hollow Point or the Piranha. This is the last penetration test. It's going to be on a 2x4. And I'll cut in it to see how far it goes with the Crossman Red Flight. There's no sense in doing it with any of the others. They're not going to penetrate like that. Went in the 
with the plastic breech, I also fired three red flights into a 2x4 and with that I used a bandsaw to get in there to see how far it went and I measured that as three quarters of an inch then just here I fired several shots because it turned out that they kept hitting the same place I've had a chance to crunch the numbers, bottom line up front, we're getting about 15 to 20 feet per second increase in speed with the metal breech and almost three quarters of a pound kinetic energy. Let's break them down by pellet. The lightest pellet is the hollow point and it went the fastest at 661.3 feet per second that's a gain of 20 feet per second it has a total of 13.9 foot pounds of kinetic energy and that's a gain of 0.8 next up is the crossman red flight and the red flight which weighs considerably more at 16.7 grains had an average speed of 605.1 that's an increase of 14 feet per second a total of 13.6 foot pounds next up is the Crossman Premier Piranha uh, Piranha had an average speed of 651.4 which is about 10 below the the hollow point which is the same weight I'm not sure why it might have something to do with the aerodynamics. The kinetic energy was 13.5 foot pounds. And last was the Excite Hammer. It came up shooting 650 feet per second, an increase of 14 feet per second. Its kinetic energy was 13.8. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Please press the like button and subscribe. Thank you. that I used was from Crossman and it's for the thir Crossman 1377 on eBay they say that it works on a 362 as well here I've already put it on but it's only temporary so I'm going to disassemble this real quickly we'll redo it the only videos that I've seen on this really are of the people working on the 1322 or, or the 1377 so we will go to fast forward here as I take this thing apart okay I've got the breech off here's the metal breech and this it replaces the stock breech which is a plastic here's the bottom of it now that I've got it apart I'm gonna put the
the new new one back on and we'll start from step one. Okay, I got it back together. This is how it came in the original package. So now I'm going to take it a, apart and put the new one on step by step. The first thing you got to do, you have to pull the bolt to the rear and cock it. Now you put it on safe. And that is so you could get to that screw right here. The sight, the peep sight, and one screw here. This screw you need to keep and put aside. Then they also supply you with a small Allen wrench. You loosen this up very carefully. So I'm just going to dump it out. And then put it in aside again. Then you got to lo loosen the barrel. I can loosen it enough by uh, just using this Allen wrench here on the end. That allows me to move the barrel just a little bit. And that's all you really need. See? Now at this point you can lift up. And you're going to have to be careful because right here is a valve. I think it's called the transfer valve. You can see there it is right there. You can move the barrel slightly to the side and then just wiggle this thing off. Now you got to remember this uh, this may fall out so the tall side goes up and that's important. I'll show you the hammer. You can kind of see the hammer in there. Alright so the hammer stems back. The gun's in safe. At this point I'm going to stop the camera because we're going to look down the barrel with another camera. Nice barrel. See the lands and grooves. Okay, now it's disassembled. It's time to put the new metal breech on. You put the bolt in. You tap it in here. Right there. Then you take the bolt handle and screw it in. You move it to the rear. So it's ready to go on. Here's one of the precarious parts here. This has got to be on exactly right. And the barrel will slip. So that port, it's got to be lined up. You can see, by the way, there is the cylinder down in there. The valve cylinder is what they call that. Through this transfer port, You got to put that here. Okay, you take the breech and then you slide it on the barrel. And you got to kind of finger where the port's going to be. And it's just using my thumb here, it's here. So you line it up and place it down on it. Make sure that the bolt is behind that thing which I didn't do so I'm going to lift this thing back up. The bolt's got to be behind that. There. Okay. Now that little bitty screw goes in here first. Alright that appears to be okay so far. I didn't tighten it all the way up. Alright we want to get the barrel Tighten back down too. Okay, the next step is we've got to put the breech plug in, and that needs to be lined up with the hole matching this hole here. And we put this screw in. This time there's no peep sight that goes with it. Seems to be tight. Once I get do a functions check, this little plug here, right here, that little thing goes in here, and that'll tighten down for the breech down further to the barrel. Did the functions check and I couldn't get the bolt to move forward. You can see there that the 
the hammer stem is not in the right position compared to the bolt so I'm gonna do some quick adjustments and I'll be right back now you can see I made the correction I had to loosen the screw here and this screw lift this up just a little bit and jiggle the bolt so that it fit over the the hammer stem and now now it works put this uh, like a tap screw it'll tighten down on the barrel and make us even firmer. And I'm torquing it down pretty good now. So now I feel it go into the barrel. So that should tighten it up really good. It is. Yeah, I think I got her done. We're ready to do a functions check. We're good to go. So now I'm going to have to test it downstairs. Well, I took it downstairs and did a couple preliminary shots. Initially, I had to make one adjustment. If you tip, screw this screw down too much, it can throw things off a little bit. The experience that I had, don't tighten it all the way down. Tighten it to just where it's tight. Yeah. 